Hi, everybody. Welcome. So excited to be here with all of you. Happy Friday. This is like the ideal, in my opinion, <laughs> this is like the ideal uh, Friday night situation, don't you think? Um, yay! I swear, guys, I always get so um, anxious before. Hi, Amy. Hi, Jess. I get so anxious before I teach, especially, I don't know why, online. And it's just so nice seeing all of you coming through here. Hi, Mary. I'm going to give it a moment for everyone to come in. Um, I will drop the, this is the playlist link. If you would like to use um, my playlist, you don't have to. This is going to be a restorative class, though, yin class. So I recommend choosing calm music. But if like early 2000s pop is what makes you feel really calm, <laughs> just go right ahead with that. Whatever is going to help you the most. All right. My dog stole my yoga mat. Oh, yeah. You can't tell, but there's like little paw prints all over my yoga mat. I, it's like something with dogs, I swear. They see a mat and they're like, this is 100% for me. Okay. Pinned, cool. All right. Everyone can see the playlist link. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for being here, Yaz. Also, Amy, if you don't have a yoga mat, you really don't mean one, need one. I don't think people thought that I was um, being serious, but you can truly do this from your bed if you want to. I have been known to do uh, yoga in my bed many times. It's so restorative, especially if you do it in the morning. Picks or it didn't happen. Okay, I'll take some pics tonight. <laughs> I wish I could post a photo. I know it's like probably not the most attractive photo doing yoga from bed, but I'll scooch this a little bit closer to my mat so you guys can see me. I didn't want to make my space too zen because I don't want it to be so dark that you guys can't see me. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, I'm just going to give it another moment or so just to get people situated. I really, yes, enjoy that wine. I had a weed mint earlier, right before class, so it'll kick in towards the end of class. Um, yeah, I'll just give everybody another moment or so to sign in. I think that coming into yoga really stressed is just makes it more stressful, right? Because it's supposed to be a, a calming, soothing activity. So I want to make sure that everybody feels like they have enough time to get here. Hi, Stephanie. Oh, you guys, this is such a delight. Truly delighted. All right. Da, da, da. Make sure. Um, fun fact for you guys. Hi, Mindy. Um, so I've never done a Facebook Live before. I've done Instagram Lives before. And so Amy from Mad Ritual and I were talking earlier this week just about logistics for the event. And I was like, hey, I'm a about this let's practice just to make i'm sure it'll be fine but let's practice and you guys it took us it took us a whole hour to figure it out um so it's good that we practice because otherwise you guys would just be sitting here listening to me swear about not being able to figure out technology and i don't think that that would be very restorative for anybody all right so if you would like to use the playlist if you have not already started it this is a good time to start either my playlist or your own playlist, just so you can kind of start to get in the right headspace that you want to be in. The reason that I don't play a playlist on my end when I'm teaching is because it, it will go through my speakers and sound a little bit garbled. And I find that it takes away from your experience. Um, and also, you know, since we're at home and doing this by ourselves, I think it's really nice to be able to pick your own music. You don't have to you know, necessarily be listening to the music that I'm using. So get your music ready. If you want to use props or anything like a blanket, if you want to have some layers nearby, a sweatshirt to take on or off, pillows, I have a water bottle. 
anything that you feel like is going to add to your practice. This is going to be very, very low key. So you don't feel like you need a lot of stuff, but just start to get situated in your space. You can even get settled in a comfy position, laying on your back on your mat, if you want to, and maybe close your eyes. If you do want to participate in the self massage, make sure that you have either, um, your mad ritual or another lotion or balm of your choice. And mad ritual is running a promo uh, through this weekend, through the 21st, which is Sunday. If you use the code slumber at checkout, you get 20% off. Pretty rad. Also, you can go to Bartels if you're in the Seattle area. Sweet. Okay. Well, I'm going to get started. Um, four minutes is always my like grace period for yoga. So welcome you guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. I am just delighted <laughs> that we are doing this together this evening. If we have not met before, my name is Lizzie. You might also know me as donuts and down dog. I am a Seattle, um, health and fitness coach. I teach a lot of different fitness modalities and then also coach people on finding their own flavor of wellness or um, setting up really great sustainable wellness routines. And I have been, oh man, I've been a fan of Mad Ritual since a really long time. I was in a really bad car accident a couple years ago and I hadn't been into CBD or alternative like healing things at all. And then Mad Ritual was the only thing that was able to really help me um, work through my injuries. And so I'm just like such a convert. I'm such a fan and I'm really excited about this combination of self-massage and yoga because i just always especially if i'm going to do a restorative class will use mad ritual on any parts of my body that need a little bit extra attention because i find that it just helps them to relax a little more so with that being said let's get started on our mats if you're not already there i know i told you to go there a minute ago <laughs> and put your balm or whatever you'd like to use nearby and you can sit on a block or a pillow, you can lay down if you want, and start by just rubbing your hands together. So we're gonna do a little self-massage first, and then we'll do our yoga. And if your hands are feeling really cold, you can even breathe on your hands. Good, and we're gonna to go to all of the areas in our self-massage today that get really tight for most people, especially during the work week. Okay, so now that your hands are warmed up, if you'd like to use balm or a lotion, you're gonna grab your balm. I like to use the lavender mad ritual at night because it's um, really soothing and I find the peppermint one I love, but it really like energizes me. So if I use it at night sometimes, then I like get a little boost. Okay, so rub it between your hands, whatever you're using. Really let it warm up and spread. And then we're gonna start right underneath your jaw. And you're gonna make kind of like a little C shape. Let's go up and down your jaw. And I want you to notice if you're clenching your teeth and try to just relax your teeth so that they're not touching each other. And also relax your tongue. So to do especially if you're focusing is like jam your tongue into the roof of your mouth which might not sound like a lot but it adds a lot of tension that you don't necessarily need right, so just massage out your jaw you might even get into like the big muscle part on your jaw does all of your chewing And then we're going to go up to your forehead. So I want you to make little hooks with your hand, like a pirate. <laughs> you have two hook hands. And then you're going to take your knuckle and draw it along the top of your eyebrows. This is the best sensation. So think of this as like you're dragging, you need a little more balm. Like you're dragging all of the tension out of your forehead. And you want to go down with this one. So start from the top and then go down because you're dragging the lymph out of your face. Yeah, with your little pirate hooks. And then we're gonna keep those pirate hooks. You're gonna go underneath your eyes and just gently push into your cheekbones. 
up and around. I feel like when we talk about self-massage, we all think about like massage your neck, massage your low back, but I've gotten really into massaging my face lately just because it feels good. <laughs> and it is incredible what a difference it makes. Right, now I want you to take your whole hand flat and just kind of pull down your face, down your neck. Like you're pulling any tension out of your face. And if you want, you can grab onto your ears as you do that too, like a little earlobe pull. Whenever anybody, this is a very niche reference, but whenever anybody talks about like touching someone's ears, I always think of that scene in um, Meet the Fockers where the mother-in-law is like, all of pleasure is based in your ears. Good, all right, now that we've covered kind of like your face, I want you just to take your palms nice and flat, thumbs will point down behind you, and start to give your neck a massage. And really think about working your thumbs into like the tops of your traps, so these big muscles on the tops of your shoulders. Those are like the muscles that hold your shoulders up by your ears when you're stressed. I have a little chalkboard behind my computer at my desk that literally just says in big chalk letters, relax your shoulders. Good, so you can start to go up your neck. Get your thumbs into your traps if that feels good. You can even drop your chin to your chest and start to bring any massaging you're doing on your neck into the base of your skull. So you might get into your head or your hair, excuse me, a little bit, but that's okay. When I first started using Mad Ritual, I had a really bad neck injury. I had whiplash from a car accident. So I was putting a lot on my neck every day and I kept having like, this one part of my hair was getting really greasy and I just hadn't made the connection. I changed shampoos a bunch of times. Nothing was working. It was because I just had an average roll in my hair. Good. I get into your collarbone a little bit. Almost like you're trying to push into your collarbone right here. Getting into your guts. I guess your guts probably aren't up here, but you know what I'm saying. Good. Oh, it feels so nice. All right, so now I want you to take just one hand. We're gonna do both sides, so don't worry too much about which one. And you can go under your shirt if you're wearing a shirt and massage into the top of your shoulder, the round part of your shoulder. Um, and I should add here, as you're giving yourself a massage, especially if you're applying a fair amount of pressure, if you feel anything sort of like crackling underneath you, it'll feel kind of like a Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> don't be alarmed. Um, if you don't know, that is your fascia, which is this connective tissue that wraps around all of your muscles and your tendons and everything. It's kind of like a spider web. But when our bodies get tight and your fascia gets tight, it kind of clumps up. So that crunchy feeling is you breaking it apart. Switch shoulders as you're ready. And that is why foam rolling and massage feels so good, especially if you feel like you have like a knot in part of your body that you just can't stretch. Like, and the muscles might not need to be stretched, it might be your connective tissue that needs a little extra TLC. I think especially if you practice yoga regularly, the tendency can be like, I'm just gonna keep stretching until this goes away. And while stretching is great, we're gonna do a lot of that tonight. It's not always the end all be all. All right, and we're gonna go to a place that everybody could use a little extra love on. I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see me. Roll down your pants just a little bit and we're gonna get into your low back. And really, I like to cover my whole low back, and even get into my hip bones a little bit here. And when I'm using self-massage, especially with CBD balm, I know I already said this, but just to reiterate it before um, I practice, before I do yoga, I like to think of like what parts of my body generally feel pretty tight, 
or like they need a little extra love. And then I just think of doing this massage before yoga as like a little boost, just helping my body a little bit more. I'm gonna really get into your low back, grab onto your love handles, give them some love. You can get even kind of down into the top of your booty <laughs> if you want. I won't make you guys watch me massage my butt, but a good butt massage is life changing, I swear. All right, last thing we're gonna finish with is your feet. All right, so I want you to take the glob of whatever you're using, get it into the ball of your foot and the arch of your foot. So your fascia connects, you know, it wraps around everywhere and there's a lot of it that connects underneath your feet. And most people, even very dedicated yogis, even myself, don't take the time to stretch their feet. And when your feet get really tight or your fascia gets really tight, yeah, start to work in between your toes. You can even kind of like move your toes and your ankle around. Um, that can be not like the factor, but a contributing factor to neck pain, excuse me, knee pain, <laughs> maybe low back pain, hip pain. I'm just adding a little foot massage or even just like rolling your foot on a massage ball a couple times a week, whenever you think about it, it can be really good. And this is probably the place where you're most likely to feel your fascia, that crackly feeling. Get into the arch of your foot too. And roll your ankle around a couple times. Give all your toesies some love. We're gonna switch sides. However you wanna do it. I'm so glad we're doing this because I really feel like self-care, like this kind of self-care gets put on the back burner a lot. Like It's like, oh, I'm gonna self-care and go lift weights or go for a run, that's really important. But then sometimes the gentler stuff that we really need, we're like, oh, I don't really need that. You know, what's it going to do for me? But it's so, so important. And it's National Sleep Day, which is a holiday that I celebrate every day. I love sleep. And get into your ankle, get into the arch of your foot, the ball of your foot, really get your thumbs in there. Good. And then last thing, if there are any areas in your body that tend to be sensitive, like if you have a knee that bugs you or your wrist or whatever, we're gonna just take a moment, a free flow, and I want you just to massage whatever areas need a little extra love. You can keep going, there's no rush, but whenever you're ready, we're gonna lay down on our backs in a comfy position. Keep your knees bent slightly, feet planted. It feels a little less aggressive on your low back. Sometimes when you lay flat on the floor, it's a lot on your hips and your low back. Walk your feet about as wide as your yoga mat and let your knees knock together. Yeah, good. And then feel your low back just relax. You can even add a little windshield wiper with your knees side to side. We're not going to do anything crazy or super different with your breath today, but I want you to just become aware of your breath. Notice if you can relax it at all. A lot of times throughout the day when we're focused or stressed, we breathe really shallow breath. That might be even kind of fast. Maybe breathe a little deeper, slow it down. You can always close your eyes. And then start to walk your feet in towards each other. Bring the soles of your feet together, knees nice and wide, Supta Baddha Konasana. So you'll start to feel the insides of your hips, maybe even your inner thighs stretch. Bring your feet as close or as far away from your body as feels good. 
If this is too much, you can always make two little fists with your hands and bring them underneath the outsides of your thighs. Or since you're at home, you can also grab some pillows and prop them up underneath you. Tuck your chin towards your chest slightly, just so your neck is really long on your mat. Relax your shoulders. Let your belly hang out. So yoga is a practice that was founded in India. The term yin actually comes from um, Chinese medicine. So there's yin and yang, or like a yin yang, right? You probably know what that is. And power vinyasa, or like running or weightlifting, are that yang energy, that like really intense, powerful, athletic, um, masculine, sweaty energy and then we have yin and yin yoga to counteract that and we hold these poses for a pretty long time so that your body can really start to relax but also just from a more practical standpoint most of us don't stretch for long enough most of us do something for like 30 seconds to a minute which is just enough to start to feel a stretch but not really enough to go beyond feeling a stretch and feeling a little looser. And yin and restorative yoga are designed to take most of the work out of your body. So your body is not really working very hard. It's in a place where it can just relax and restore. So if you don't feel like you're doing much, that's a good thing. Check back in with your breath. I should also add that a lot of times in fitness, we think that we need to really be able to feel something for it to be valid or for something to be really hard for it to quote unquote count. This is kind of the opposite of that. So it's okay if you get into some of these poses and you don't really feel a lot. Don't feel like you have to contort yourself or go to your limit. This is about just allowing yourself to be wherever your body decides to be today. There's no right or wrong. On the mat, just gently squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other so that they tuck underneath you and your chest can open up. I like to keep my hands on my belly here, but you can also bring your arms overhead. Notice if you're arching your back off the mat, right? Try to relax your rib cage down. And just not push your back onto the floor, but relax it down towards the floor. Relax your face. Unless you are standing up all day, most of us sit. So you're in this 90 degree position with your torso and your thighs, which really shortens your hips your hip flexors, so then they get really tight because they're used to being in that position. And even when you're walking, that can really wear on your hip muscles, so it's taking some time to really let those relax. We're going to take a couple more rounds of breath right here. Before we move on, we've been settled in this pose and we'll be settled in all of our poses for quite a while. Your body really starts to settle and relax and so anytime we come out of a pose or start to transition to a new pose, you also want to go pretty slowly so you're not really jarring or shocking your body. So with that being said, start to really slowly plant your feet again. And take a little rock side to side with your knees once your feet are planted underneath your knees. While we lay on your back, we're going to do a cat cow. I'll pull my shirt up a little bit so you can see this. So laying down, you're going to arch your back, 
Peel your spine off the mat and then tuck your pelvis. Think about really this time pushing your back down into the floor. So I'm almost curling my hip bones and my rib cage towards each other. So if you've done a traditional yoga class and you're on your hands and knees and do cat cow, this is like the same thing. This version is really intended to help decompress your spine. It's great to do before bed. I also do this every morning before I get out of bed, just to kind of loosen up my back, especially if you wake up with like a sore low back or you have low back pain. This is a really good one to do in bed, just kind of a little arch and a tuck. And you're just kind of building some more room between all of the bones in your spine to breathe. Good. When you're ready, start to bring your knees into your chest. Keep your hands on top of your knees and take a couple circles with your knees. Feel how good that feels on your hips. <laughs> I love yin and restorative yoga because we like pretty much never get off the floor. It's great. Good, other way. You can go as quickly or as slowly here as feels good in your body. All right, good. When you're ready, plant your right foot at the base of your spine. Cross your left leg over your right leg like you're doing a little, I don't know, a sassy leg position. And you're going to push your hips towards the left side of your mat. Keep your legs crossed loosely. You don't have to squeeze them together and bring your knees over towards the right. So hips to the left, knees to the right. We're in a supine twist. If this is too much on your low back, you can uncross your legs. Okay, you can also bring your knees closer or further away from your body based on what you need. This left arm, start to open it up towards the ceiling and rotate your rib cage so that your chest points up towards the sky. You can also bring your hands behind your head or grab a pillow. So you should feel a stretch through your chest, your low back, the outside of your left butt cheek. These twisting shapes are really good for your back. So sometimes if you're just going forward, back, side to side, and trying to stretch or relax your back, you can't quite get to what you need to get to. And I find that if you add a little twist, you're able just to kind of stretch those muscles in a new way and it always feels like a really awesome release. If you don't do yoga regularly also, well, and just in like normal day-to-day -day life, we don't really get in very many twisting positions for a very long period of time. So the older you get, if you're not adding these little twists, the more kind of like frozen your back starts to feel. And I want you to notice now that we've been here for a little bit, your knees get a little closer to the floor. You probably feel like the deep layer of muscles in your legs relaxing a little bit more. So the goal is to get to where everything is relaxed, but that takes some time. Also getting into not just your muscles, the connective tissue, I know we talked about that, and your ligaments are getting a little bit of love, your joints are getting love, your hip socket. Good, if you want, you can walk your head a little further away from your butt and get just a little more length now that we're twisted. Whenever I do this, I feel like my body is a washcloth and I'm like, this is kind of gross, but like just wringing out my washcloth. And feel how good your low back feels here. And sometimes with our bodies, we don't even realize that things maybe were tight or didn't feel good until they no longer are tight. It's kind of that like, you don't really know what you don't know. 
I remember the first time I went to a yin class afterwards, I was like, my body can feel like this? Why did nobody tell me? All right, really slowly. I want you to keep your legs crossed like this. Whoa, <laughs> slowly start to come back onto your back. Right, and then you're gonna keep this cross, lift your legs. This is like my favorite yin pose. And you're going to grab onto your feet or your ankles or even just your knees. If that's not gonna happen for you too, you can loop a little, like a blanket around your feet. You can also just hang out here, right? You're not missing out by not grabbing your feet. It's just a different version. And if you have that grip on your feet, I want you to push your knees away from you gently and then just really gently pull your feet in towards your body. You should feel a deep stretch in your piriformis, which is deep, deep in your butt, in your booty. And then you can add a little rock side to side if that feels good. Okay, you don't have to be still. You won't get in trouble if you're fidgeting. You know, some, some yoga teachers, some uh, modalities of yoga really encourage you to be still and to have that discipline. And my approach is more that I really want you to learn how to listen to your body and what it needs because we're programmed to not do that. And so if that means you need to fidget or readjust, do that. Let go of your feet if you had them. Start to bring your knees into your chest. And then grab onto the insides or outsides of your feet for happy baby. You can also bring your hands to the backs of your thighs or your calves, right? Whatever feels good. I have these really long orangutan arms so I can grab onto my feet. I suppose it's called happy baby. So I want you to think about like, you know, a baby probably wouldn't just be still here with like a super serious face. They're rocking around, they're bending and straightening their legs. Hopefully you guys didn't just hear my hip pop, it was really loud. And let go of your feet, bring your knees into your chest. Roll your ankles a couple times, wiggle your toes. Give your foundation a little bit of love, roll them the other way. All right, plant your left foot at the base of your spine. Cross your right leg over your left leg. Before you shift your knees over, scoot your hips to the right. And then now bring your knees to the left. So you're just adding a little bit of extra twist. Push your shoulders down onto the floor, point your chest up towards the sky. Great, right, and you just got here, so your body is still kind of tense. almost like it's a little hesitant. So we're going to hang out, as you know, for a couple minutes. So you really start to feel stuff relax. So usually what happens in a yin pose or a restorative yoga pose is you'll start to feel your really big muscles relax first. So like you can probably feel your glute max relaxing right now, maybe your hamstrings. Once those big muscles relax, then you'll start to get into all of the little muscles that we often don't really give that much attention to when we're just doing traditional stretches. Remember that you can uncross your legs if you need to. You can readjust how close your knees are to your body. And unless you have an identical twin who is taking this class, with you right now. We all have really different proportions, really different anatomy. So your pose and my pose, even if we're both doing it perfectly for our body, it's not gonna look the same. A lot of you have probably heard me say this in class before, but there's a Seattle yoga teacher I love to take class from. Her name is Carling, and she always says, in her classes, like our bodies aren't symmetrical on the inside, so we need to stop trying to make them symmetrical on the outside. And I think that's so applicable to yoga. Like one side's gonna be more flexible than the other, and that's okay.
Good, make adjustments as needed. And if you start to feel like a little burn, maybe you're kind of cramped up, unravel and relax, come back to it. Let's play on just a couple more breaths. So no matter what you're doing really intentionally, I want you to listen to your breath right here. Roll back through center until your whole back is planted on the floor. Keep this sassy cross with your legs. And then lift your feet off the mat. Grab onto the outsides of your feet, ankles. Same thing as the other side. You're just doing whatever is most accessible for you here. your knees just a little further away from your body, good. And then let go of your feet. Take a little rock side to side for me here. All right, last thing we're going to do on our backs for now. Reach your fingers away from your toes. Take like a morning stretch. So arch your back off the floor. You can flex your toes. And then we're going to do banana pose. <laughs> I think this pose made is so fun. Grab onto your left wrist and pull yourself over towards the right. And your butt cheeks and your shoulders will stay on the floor. So from above, you look like a banana. If you want more intensity, walk your feet over towards the right too. And you can cross an ankle on top of the other ankle. Either one, either cross works. Just to kind of anchor your legs down into place. And then pull your shoulders away from your ears. So we're stretching underneath your shoulders. We're stretching outside your hip, you can probably feel. to you. My watch is getting sassy. So again, just getting into these areas that we don't normally get to. You can probably feel your lat stretching. This stretch is really good too if you tend to have like shoulder discomfort, shoulder pain, if your shoulder bugs you. I've been there. I feel ya. This can be a good one to maybe not completely make it go away, but start to release some of that tension. When I was in college, I was on the rowing team at my school and I had, my shoulder was always bugging me. And I kept going and seeing the trainer and I was like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do about this, this is driving me crazy. And she was like, okay, well, I want you to sleep like on your side with the shoulder that's bugging you up top, kind of wrapped around something like a big pillow or, you know, like a, a, one of those big rower boys, just <laughs> find a big rower boy to snuggle up with at night and wrap your arm around him. And now I'm married to one of those <laughs> big rower boys. But I always think that was such funny advice. <laughs> Obviously she was joking, but it stayed with me. 
Good. If you want more, now that your body's relaxed, you can go a little bit more over towards the right with your hands and your feet. So if you're left-handed, this will be the intense side for you. If you're right-handed, don't worry. Your time is coming. We're going to do the other side here soon. Another one. Great to do in bed. guys let's go back through center and really take a second and center stretch long and feel how center no longer feels like center like it feels like you're stretched over we got so comfortable being over towards the right now we're gonna do the other side so grab onto your right hand pull yourself over towards the left you know my right-handed people this is where you'll feel it and then walk your feet over towards the left too keep both of your butt cheeks and your chest or your butt cheeks and your shoulders, excuse me, down on the floor. So your chest should stay pointed up towards the side. So we're not doing like a side stretch here, right? You're laying on your back and pulling everything over to one side. Roll your right shoulder away from your right ear. Good. And if you want, maybe a little more to the left, right? It's up to you. Come back through center, bring your knees into your chest. The reason I always do knees into your chest is because this is a really long position on your low back. It's really nice and restorative for your low back and you're kind of like resetting your back and your body in this position. All right, really slowly, we're gonna come to a child's pose, however you want to get there. Pull your pants up. So you'll bring your big toes towards each other. And tonight, spread your knees really wide. So you should have enough room for your torso to go between your thighs. And then reach your arms forward, bring your forehead or one ear down to the floor. And gently push into your hands to send your hips back towards your heels. Yeah, there you go. You should feel Kind of the whole back line of your body stretching also can feel really good or really intense on your shoulders and your chest. If this position is too much for your shoulders, you can do an embryo pose. So instead you'll just reach your hands back towards your feet and let your shoulders roll down towards the floor. I always think of this as like how you see little kids sleeping when they're really tired at the end of the day. My little cousin used to always sleep like that. And take a little wiggle with your hips. If you had one ear down, let's even out the stretch your neck is getting, so bring the other ear down to the floor.
you guys come through center. Come up onto your hands and knees. This is tabletop pose. And now we'll do a traditional cat cow. Okay, so just like we did on our backs, you're going to arch your belly. You can look forward or up. And then round your spine, bring your chin to your chest. And just a little movement. Good. Arch and round. And one more time, all the way through. Yeah, you can move with your breath if that feels good. And then come back to your center. Tuck your toes underneath you. And then usually your pinky toe doesn't want to join the party, so you might have to reach back to get it to join the party. We're doing a foot stretch. You can probably already feel it. All right, so layer one, stay right here. This is, I think, the most intense stretch that we'll do. Layer two, you can bring your hips back towards your heels. Layer three, and this is only if you want to. Just bring your hands onto your thighs and sit up. That's too much for me. So I'm gonna go kind of between layer one and layer two. And this one will be quick, I promise. Good, gently push into the balls of your feet. Try to push the balls of your feet a little more down into your mat and send your heels back. Whew, this one's spicy. <laughs> Crawl back up to your tabletop, untuck your toes, and you're just going to gently tap out the arches of your feet. Alright, from here, come on down to your stomach. Bring your feet about mat width distance apart with the shoelace parts of your feet down. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders and lift your chest. Good, now bring your elbows underneath your shoulders and bring your forearms parallel to each other. Draw your heart forward. Push your hips down. You should feel a little baby stretch in the front of your hips, maybe even in the front of your chest. Okay, you can stay right here if you want more of a hip stretch. Walk your hands in one scooch closer, and then slowly start to straighten your arms as you push your hips down. Yeah, I never think that this is like, this feels like the least attractive position that, you could, that I could put my body in. But it does feel really good on your hips. Great, right, so try to let your butt muscles relax. And if you feel like your shoulders are coming up towards your ears, right, walk your hands a little further away from you, push the shoulders down. This is called seal pose, because you look like a cute little seal. Good, and then we're going to come all the way down onto your belly. Take your left arm and reach it straight out towards the left with your palm facing down towards the floor. Okay, bring your left ear down. Bring your right hand under your right shoulder. And we're going to start to roll over towards that left arm. This top leg can do whatever you want. So I usually bring my foot behind me. That feels good in my body. You might just keep your legs stacked or floating. If you can't already tell, we're going for a stretch in your left shoulder front of your left side of your chest. All right, then you want to relax your head. If this is enough for you, stay right here. If you're like, I feel nothing, you can come back onto your stomach and you're going to cactus your left arm. So your elbow will stay reaching out from your shoulder, but then your forearm will become parallel with your mat, palm down, and you'll roll that way called crocodile pose. Keep walking your left hand away from you so that you can really build space between your left shoulder and your left ear. You've probably done some variation of this pose in a doorway, right? You can put your forearms up on the door and then kind of push your chest through. It feels so good. This is just the, the floor version. All right. 
friends. Let's slowly roll back onto our tummies. You're gonna scooch so I don't hit this wall, and then you're going to do the other side. So right arm straight out, palm down. And remember, your right arm is just reaching out from your shoulder. Okay, right ear to the floor, left hand underneath you this time. And start to roll over towards your right arm. Right, if this doesn't feel like enough, you can always cactus your arm on the floor. We talked earlier about not worrying about if your body is symmetrical or not. So like on this side, I want to cactus my arm. On the last side, there's no way in the hell that that was going to happen. Just honor that. There's plenty of time to push your body to work towards these like incredible goals. And tonight is a night just to relax and restore. Keep walking your right arm away from you so that you have some space between your right shoulder and your right ear. Pretty crazy how good rolling around on the floor like this can make your body feel. It doesn't look like much, but it feels so good. Okay, take one or two more breaths right here. And then start to roll onto your stomach for me. We have one more pose that we're going to do. So from your stomach, pop your left leg out. Kind of like if you sleep on your stomach, you might know this position. So left leg out. And take your right arm and bring it all the way underneath you. So if you're a lady, you feel like you're kind of squishing your boobs. Okay, palm is up towards the sky. Now from here, take your left arm and your chest, open up towards the ceiling so you're in a really deep version of supine twist. Now notice if your chin is going way up towards the sky. I want you just to gently tilt your head, pull your chin towards your chest, pull the base of your skull away from your shoulders. And it's normal here sometimes to feel like you can't get your head on the floor. You can always bring your hands behind your head, pillow, roll up your mat. Don't worry about this left knee touching the floor. This is a, a we got into a deep stretch, so it might not happen here. If you want more of a stretch, you can always bring this knee a little closer in towards your torso. And then same thing if you want less, just bring the knee a little further away from you. Good, okay, let's start to roll slowly all the way back onto your stomach. Do the other side, so pop your right knee out like your stomach's sleeping. Take your left arm, thread it underneath you, swish your boobies, left hand up towards the sky, and then open your right arm and your chest up. I really put a lot of thought, if you can believe it, into what leggings I was going to wear, and apparently did not make the right choice because they keep sliding all over the place. I hope that all of you are in sweatpants and jammies. Good, relax your knee down towards the floor. Remember, you can bring your knee in closer to your body if you need more here, or further away if you need a little less. Tuck your chin slightly, lengthen the back of your neck.
Okay guys, from here, we're gonna roll all the way onto your back. So you'll just do like a quarter roll onto your back. You might need to scooch back onto your mat. Now bring your knees into your chest. I said that was our last pose. We're gonna do one more. Bring the soles of your feet together and your knees open wide off the mat this time. Grab onto your ankles or your feet and gently push your knees away from you as you push your back towards the floor. Nice little low back, inner thigh stretch. Okay, let go of your feet. Hug your knees up to your chest, wrap your arms around yourself, hold yourself tight, whatever that looks like. And you take a big inhale, your deepest inhale of the night, of the day, of the week. Hold it for a moment. And then exhale, and we're going to come to Shavasana. Shavasana is your final resting posture. And I want you to take whatever position feels best. Right, so you might lay on your side, you might lay on your stomach. I'm going to lay on my back with my feet nice and wide because that feels good. If you're in your bed, you can get snuggled up. A lot of people like to have blankets during this part of a restorative class. Whatever you need, get it ready. And then close your eyes. Feel your calm, long breath. Every time you exhale, relax your body a little bit more. Part of having a really good night's sleep is being able to disconnect from your day but oftentimes to really disconnect, you need to reflect a little bit. So as you transition into your sleepy time, your snooze time, I want you to think of, it can be one thing, it can be a couple things that went really well today because of you. doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be something that impacted anybody else, or it can be big and have impacted a lot of people, right, but something that went really well because of you. Start to, if you're not in bed, if you're moving on after this, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. If you're in bed or if you're falling asleep, stay right where you are. Roll your wrists and your ankles. And take a big stretch on your mat. Reach your fingers and your toes away from each other. Really slowly roll onto one side. Come on up to a seat. Bring a hand to your heart and then stack your other hand on top of it. Feel your heartbeat. And before we move on, thank yourself for being here. Thank your body for taking care of you. And know that no matter what you did or did not do today or this week, that you deserve, you are so worthy of a really good night's sleep and really deep rest. Take an inhale. When you exhale, bring your chin to your chest. 
Namaste. Yay. You guys, we did it. We did the damn thing. Hopefully you're all asleep right now. <laughs> That's how I know I've done my job well. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you guys all carving time out of your lives, your Friday night, um, whatever you have going on to take care of yourself. I think that is such an incredible accomplishment. Um, keep in mind, Mad Ritual is doing a sale this weekend, 20% off all of their balms using code SLUMBER. It ends on Sunday, which is the 21st. Um, if you have any questions for me, my name is Lizzie. You can find me at Donuts and Down Dog on Instagram or donutsanddowndog.com. Um, you can also find me through Mad Ritual. It's very easy to find me. Um, and thank you, Mad Ritual, for having us. Thank all of you. Yeah, banana is my jam. Banana pose is the best. Windshield wiper, I'm so glad that you guys liked it. If you have requests for other yoga poses that you'd like to see the next time we do a Mad Ritual class, let me know too. All right, thank you guys so much. Have a great night. I hope to see you all soon. Sleep tight.